we train to have mastery of our own mind. Today, I'd like to speak with you about transforming the energy of fear into the energy of love with courage. I learned a powerful lesson from a good friend of mine this weekend, Kurt Cronin, who is a former US Navy SEAL. He spent 13 years with the SEALs on special operations and really powerful missions where he embodies the energy of a warrior, but Kurt is interesting because he is super, super heart-centered in his leadership. So I admire that quality of being a true warrior and a man of family, community, and positive heart-centered leadership. So Kurt and I spent the weekend together and he did yoga with me. He did a complete yoga practice to experience what I was truly about when I root a student into the present moment and the deep now. And Kurt, in turn, offered a perspective on the energy of fear that shifted my perception. So my teacher, Sharon Gannon, usually says, magic is a shift in perception. And I truly experienced this mental, psychological shift, which is embodied in new footsteps on the earth today going forward. I feel that shift inside simply by the use of language. So I believe that words are spells and language is a form of psychic surgery, meaning if we hear the right phrase at the right time and the right way, it can travel past our conscious mind deep into the well of our being in the subconscious mind, which in turn affects our emotions. And this is catalytic in how we behave in the world and how we view ourselves in the world. So Kurt did the yoga session with me and he was really appreciative of how I tapped him in to the breathing and through the use of the voice to transmit my accumulated energy in the practice. And then we talked afterwards about the energy of fear, which seems to be permeating our society. Today is October 12th, 2020. And as we approach the elections in November, <clears throat> we can see all over the country that people are buying up firearms and ammunition for these firearms are sold out. And the energy of polarization is strong. So there seems to be two highly opinionated sides that are driving towards a clash. And this is causing some anxiety in our society. And even within myself, I am praying for peace. I'm wishing for peace. But around me, I see this energy of anxiety in friends. I see it in my students. And it's definitely propagated quite a bit in our media. So that sort of infects our mind and our subtle body, and it affects our vibration. So I told Kurt that I was feeling a little uncertain about the environment of lawlessness that our society seems to be creating. Uh, we seem to be quick to promote violence as a means of solving our problems and then to forgive violence as a way of solving our problems. And this to me is creating a dissonance between law and order and the, the rules we've agreed upon in our society. And it seems to be creating a little bit of mayhem. So when I brought this up to Kurt, he isolated it as the big overarching principle we explore in our meditation, which is the fear of death. And Kurt described uh, certain missions he was on, and he said something, a phrase that went deep into my subconscious mind. And in that moment, I could feel the rewiring of my nervous system in a new cosmology, a new way of looking at the world. Kurt said, I made a decision a long time ago to only die once. And I heard this and I paused, I had him stop and I repeated the phrase to myself so that I could fully digest and expand into the phraseology and then wire it into myself as a new possibility, a new outlook. So what he was saying is when he took an oath to defend the constitution and freedom and the country and to be on the path of a warrior and train at the highest level 
of what it means to be a warrior, he decided to banish fear from the cells of his body and embrace the principle, the true reality, that we're all going to die. This is inevitable. And that he would die the day that that time arrived. It could have been on the battlefield. It could be, again, something unpredictable like cancer. We can walk out on the street in our city and a bus can hit us. You're going to die. We're all going to die. And although I had meditated on this principle quite a bit, and I even got in touch with my own death through a one-year battle with a lethal parasite and illness, it went even deeper into me to the points of anxiety and worry and what happens in the mind when we worry, we imagine negative stimuli. We make a story in our head like, what if our house gets robbed? What if someone attacks us in the street? What if, what if, what if we imagine our death over and over and it causes an anxiety? And what Kurt was expressing was the energy of courage. So over here we have fear and we have love. And what I did in the moment is I put courage in the center. So courage is being the vehicle. When courage is applied to the energy of fear, we can transmute that energy and create love and acceptance. And love and acceptance creates compassion and connection to our local community, our global community, and expands out to the whole world so that we can create better systems, better models. Our institutions and our current models are breaking. They're coming down because they were not interwoven to create peace. And we see the limitations of these old systems, and we are open to new systems that are based more on interrelationships and partnerships and more of helping one another. So some breakdown is in the process. Some entropy is going on. And Kurt was discussing courage. His phraseology tapped me into the fact that in my daily practice, I should go deeper into accepting that we are here only for a little while. It's a temporary body, and this body will be given back to the earth. It's on loan from Mother Earth and from the sun. And we are going to use it for the experiences we need. Some of us are, Kurt's a family man. He has a child on the way. Uh, some of us are here to be parents. Some of us are here to be entrepreneurs. Some of us are here as healers. Some of us are here as administrators. Some of us are here to support heart-centered leadership. So we have different roles and reasons for incarnating, but to embrace the fact fully to take the courage in a daily practice to embrace the idea that we are going to die and that it is okay and that as a spiritual being, our energy transforms. Death is nothing but a doorway to another dimension. And once we, the courage we take to practice asana, pranayama, meditation, loving kindness, the courage of the personal practice the, that, that it builds inside the heart allows us to be accepting of that day we would die. My own father is a high, high ranking military officer who trained with the British Special Forces, and he won't release a lot of information to his own son about some of the missions he's been on. But I understand that that courage that is inside of Kurt is inside of my father and that we can all use, we can channel through someone else the energy of courage to do our personal practice in the morning. The morning time is where we protect our mind and we train our mind to face the ups and downs of the day. So when Kurt and I did the yoga practice, it was early in the morning before the day got started. We woke up, we shared coffee, we shared a few positive stories uh, about our family origins and backgrounds, and then we practiced. And then that led to a buoyancy of ideas. He shared all of his uh, entrepreneurial ventures that he has done and his latest entrepreneurial venture. But most importantly, it was 
booming from the heart, booming love, love for humanity, love for his family, love for his community. Everything about Kurt was going back to positivity, empowerment, and what the citizens of the world in their local communities can do each day to embody courage leading to love. So I wanted to share with you today that courage is the precursor to love. And love is the precursor for compassion to all. And a daily personal practice that allows the mind to become reflective, we can see <clears throat> that the words around us are spells and the words that we allow past our subconscious mind into the well of our being actually program us. So what are you programming your mind with? There are ideologies in our society now that are programming citizens of America to create separation and division, to say some lives matter and to say some lives perhaps don't matter as much and it's creating division. I refuse to allow some of the popular ideologies and phraseologies out there into my mind because the depth of my being is devoted to the spiritual path and I only allow ideas in that create union and harmony, not separation at all costs, even the cost of political correctness. I absolutely refuse in this country that I live in with that is based on freedom of expression and free speech, I choose to have a specific point of view that some can dial into and turn their own energy to that frequency of union, pulsating love, and coherence. We are needing coherence at this time as we move closer to the election. We need to create a peaceful vibration and that starts with the way that we view ourselves. So I teach the mantra, Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha, using obstacles as a way to learn. Om Namah Shivaya <clears throat> means I am universal consciousness. Loka Samasta Suki No Bhavantu means may my thoughts, words, and actions create peace, happiness, and wellness for others. These are cohesive, threaded ideas that are from the eternal teachings of yoga and consciousness that the masters have left behind for us to download at this time of confusion and create peace within ourselves. So I had a valuable experience this weekend spending time with someone I truly look up to, I truly admire, and the energy of making a circle of exchanging where I spent time teaching him my form, yoga and meditation and breathing, and then Kurt spun it back in the perfect circle to me to go very, very deep into the seed of what fear is and how to transform fear with the energy of courage into love. So I invite you to think about how you are using words as spells to program your mind for positive, peaceful action.